go, everybody. A pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to share uh, my work uh, with the audience. I'm very much looking forward to this. Thank you for hosting this symposium. Um, so uh, as, thank you for that kind introduction also, uh, Lisa, I really appreciate it. And I think you've said enough about me. I don't have to introduce myself. And I'll just let you know that today I'm gonna be uh, sharing with you some of the research that we've done during the uh, pandemic in adults age 50 plus uh, here in the US and in several countries in Latin America in terms of the impact of the pandemic on well-being and on uh, community health. So that's the overall goal of my of my presentation. I'll start by sharing with you some uh, data. This is these are national data that reflect the number of the percent of COVID cases broken down by the major racial or ethnic groups in the U.S., which are white non-Hispanic, uh, black non-Hispanic, and Hispanics or Latinos. So what you see in the gray uh, bar graphs is the percent that of the total U.S. population that each of these groups represents. So the Hispanic Latino population is about 18 percent of the U.S. population, Black non-Hispanic about 13% and white non-Hispanic about 60%. What you see in red is the percent of COVID-19 cases as of October 18th, just pulled together throughout this pandemic. And um, as you can see, uh, so what it represents the percent uh, per race ethnicity of total cases of COVID-19 in the US. So as you can see, for example, while Hispanics represent about 18% of the population, they represent 26% of the diagnosed COVID-19 cases or reported cases. Um, while in while white non-Hispanics represent 60% of the population, they represent 52% of overall cases. And again, for black, 12% of the population, kind of 12% of cases as well. So these are national data that are widely available reported by the CDC. Uh, these are data from the County of San Diego that are similar in many ways, but they are data from our county. So what you see in the gray uh, bar is the percent of the San Diego County population that is uh, of each of these racial ethnic groups. So 34% of Latinos in uh, of persons in, in San Diego County are of Latino origin or descent, but they represent 50% of the population of COVID-19 cases, 50% of COVID-19 cases, and they represent 44% of COVID-19 related deaths um, as uh, uh, reported by the health and human services agencies here. Um, while, while white represent 30% of the San Diego County population, they represent 36% of of cases and 45% of, uh, sorry, they 45% of the population represent 30% of cases and 36% and of COVID-19 related deaths. And then you see also in the black population had that pans out. So this probably doesn't come as a great um, surprise to many of you. I think this has been reported in the media many times. So this pandemic is disproportionately impacting certain communities. And this of course just represent Three of the communities in our country, in our and in and in our in our county, uh, there are many more that are not represented here. I just chose to focus on those here uh, because they are the larger um, ethnic racial groups. But there are many more, of course. Uh, if we look at uh, within the Americas, and these are also data. Uh, as reported by John Hopkins University. What you can see here, so these are the Americas, we're right here, and the, the dots represent the number of uh, COVID cases. So the bigger the, the circle, the more cases in an area. So as you can see, when, and I, of course, these are reported data. Uh, we see that this has impacted, of course, everywhere, not North America, South America, Central America. Now, the next one represents the cases to fatalities ratios associated with COVID-19. So basically how deadly the virus has been uh, relative to the number of cases of COVID-19 in different areas. And it, there's a quite of a stark contrast in that. You can see that again, the bigger the dot, the more uh, fatalities uh, uh, per cases. And you can see that there are bigger in many areas in uh, Central and South America. 
So again, these are uh, widely available uh, data and it just gives you a glimpse of what, you know, one aspect of the pandemic that is the number of cases uh, in the different areas of the country and in the Americas overall. Now, the, next, the rest of my talk is really gonna be focused on uh, sharing with you some research that I did in collaboration with some colleagues. And uh, it was led by, by a colleague, Dr. Yaquel Kidos at Harvard University. And involved, as you can see, a bunch of different researchers. These are across Latin America uh, and the US. And we're interested in looking at the impact of COVID on the well-being and cognition of older adults in the US and Latin America. So um, we launched this survey actually pretty early on in the pandemic. It's interesting to see in retrospect because when we were started, we were in such a hurry to, you know, get this research going because you know we never expected it was going to take uh, this long, and we wanted to capture things as they were happening. So the data I'm going to be sharing with you today are data on uh, participants that were community dwelling adults, age 50 plus, living in the U.S. and in several countries in Latin America. We deploy, uh, we, we collected uh, data in a, a number of uh, people in these countries using both online and phone methods. So we're not doing any in-person uh, evaluations at the time that was not you know, allowed in most uh, places, of course. And the data that we are presenting today was collected between May and September of 2020. So we sent a, a series of surveys for people to complete. Uh, some of the data I'm going to be focusing on today are one from the Epidemic Pandemic Impact Inventory, uh, which is a measure that basically asks this question that you see listed there. So since the onset of the coronavirus disease pandemic began, what has, um, like, what has changed for you and your family? And then the person reports, yes, this has changed for me. Yes, this has changed for a person in the home or no, this has not happened to me. And there's a, a different uh, questions that touch on each of the things that you see, uh, each of the concepts that you see listed there. So infection history, work and employment, economic hardship, home life, physical distancing and quarantine, social activities, emotional health, physical health problems, and also capture positive changes that people perceived associated with the pandemic. And we also ask people to complete, uh, complete uh, some self-report measures of cognitive and memory problems. So this is what the uh, participants um, produce, uh, the data we collected. These are uh, the characteristics, the demographic characteristics of our uh, sample. So as you can see, uh, there were uh, 645 non-Latino whites living in the US that completed the survey, 135 Latinos and 77 non-Latino blacks. Um, age, as is shown here, they had an average uh, of 68, 65 and 66 years of age. Uh, for each of these groups. Education was uh, pretty high. Uh, it is you know, close to a college degree, so 50 year, 15 years of education for the non-Latino white and the Latino group and 16 years of education for non-Latino black, which 16 years of education corresponds to a college degree. So this is a well-educated sample. This is a sample of convenience. This is not a population-based study. So uh, just to start you know, being mindful that the data really reflect uh, the reality of some people, some segments of this population. About uh, you know, 70 to 80% or so of, the, of each of, of these groups were uh, women, uh, with the rest being males. And then in the next um, table there, you can see the same sort of information for the different uh, countries. So we have 100 people from Argentina, 151 from Chile, 308 from Mexico, 152 in Peru. We also co uh, collected data in a number of other countries, including in Uruguay, my country of origin, uh, that unfortunately I'm not able to present here today for some um, issues having to do with being able to pull all the data together, but hopefully I'll have another chance to present it. We collected data on 1500 people in Uruguay similar to what I'm going to be showing today. So it's uh, that's what was one of the positive aspects of the pandemic for me, being able to uh, do research in my country of origin, which I hadn't been able to do. Um, so you can see the demographics there. So in the interest of time, I'm going to keep moving forward. So what I'm going to show you now is some of the results from our, from our study. So these are the data on the sample in the United States. 
So we looked at infection history and work employment, so impact of the pandemic on these areas. And we didn't see any difference uh, across the different races and ethnicity in these areas at that point in time, right? So this was early on in the pandemic, though there was a trend already for Latinos to fare worse on infection history, meaning that they were reporting more COVID-19 infection uh, compared to other groups. Um, but in general, not huge changes, at least early on. Uh, we did see some changes, though, in terms of the report of people of uh, undergoing financial hardship. So Latinos reported more financial hardship than non-Latino whites and Blacks. So what you see here is the list of items that go into this subscale. Um, and what it's represented here is the kind of the percent of items that were endorsed. So Latinos endorse more of these items relative to the other groups. Okay, and then we looked at uh, home life. So, and these were the items that were included in home life. Uh, so, you know, from things like having to take care of children in the home to having to move or relocate, becoming homeless, more physical or uh, verbal uh, conflict within family members. So that's the type of item that was captured by this scale. And we found that there was great and negative impact of the pandemic on home life in non-Latino Blacks compared to Latinos and, and, and Latino uh, non-Latino whites. Uh, so that was another difference there. We didn't see, uh, while well, everybody was reporting, you know, changes in social activities and having to physically distance and be in quarantine for having been exposed to COVID, um, we didn't see significant group differences on the social impact of the pandemic across the different groups, again, at that point in time in, in our sample. Uh, we also didn't see differences in emotional health and well-being or in a report of new physical or health problems uh, by different groups. Again, people were reporting some, some problems. So there was an average of you know, kind of two problems reported out of seven in terms of emotional health and well-being and about two or three for physical health uh, problems, but they were not different different across the groups. Um, this one is one that I find particularly interesting. So this subscale, we looked at uh, positive changes associated with the pandemic. So these are all items that were trying to capture what things, what changes might have happened in people's lives that are positive in nature, like spending more quality time, with partner, spouse, or children, improved relationships, new connections, maybe uh, being uh, trying to be more uh, time in nature, outdoors, developing new hobbies or activities because of the life circumstances, maybe eating healthier. Um, so when we looked at the data, we found that even though, you know, if you might remember the earlier data that I reported that Latinos had more financial hardship potentially a little bit more of COVID infection and non-Latino Blacks reported also more negative changes in, in home life. Both of those groups, Latinos and non-Latino Blacks, reported more positive changes associated with the pandemic as well. Um, we also looked at cognitive and memory complaints. Again, these are by self-report, so these are not um, kind of performance-based assessments, but just kind of what people were experiencing. And we saw that non-Latino whites uh, were reporting more cognitive concerns than Latinos and non-Latino Blacks, but with no differences in memory overall, uh, just in general sort of cognitive concerns, like maybe having a, their mind being a little bit more foggy, um, and maybe not paying attention just as well as they used to. So that was what non, the concerns that non-Latino whites had um, were more increased compared to Latinos and Blacks. Then as one of the aims of the projects was to look at the relationship between uh, whether the negative impact of the pandemic was like in, in home life, in um, financially, all of these different scales that I've shown you, whether that was related to who reported more cognitive or memory complaints, and we found that the great, the worse the negative impact of the pandemic that people reported, the more cognitive and memory problems that they reported across all groups. So uh, this table shows our data from Latin America. It was represented in a different way. So what you see here 
is for each of the scales that I mentioned before, like infection history, work employment, economy, home life, and so forth, what, how did people that were completed the survey in each of these countries, how did they compare to Latinos in the US? And so any, I know the numbers might not kind of represent a lot, but really the point here is not so much looking at the specific numbers, but looking at how uh, people in this country were faring compared to Latinos in the US. If you see numbers that are in red represent that people in the Latin American countries were doing worse or reported doing worse in these areas compared to US Latinos. And um, in green is if people in the Latin American country were reporting doing better than US Latinos. So a lot of our US Latino sample is of uh, Mexica origin or this Mexican origin or descent. So that's why I'm presenting this here first. And at that point in Mexico, things were also pretty hard. They reported in an, a number of different areas in people's life being worse than Latinos here, including emotional health and well being. Yet again, we see this kind of paradox that even though a lot of things are worse, they're reporting more positive changes as well associated with the pandemic compared to US Latinos who already were high compared to uh, non-Latino whites here in the US. Peru, it's a similar sort of pattern of you know, worse in a number of things, but better in terms of, of positive changes. In Argentina at that time, the virus hadn't quite taken a hold yet. Uh, things got much worse the month to follow and we have longitudinal data, so we'll be able to compare that. But in Argentina and Chile, so further down in Latin America, the, the pandemic really took hold of those countries a little bit later than this. It was still happening, of course, but not as bad as it happened when we were starting to get better, they started to get worse. So these are the data that, uh, that we have at this point. Uh, what we, this last piece that I wanna share with you is the report of cognitive and memory uh, concerns that there were kind of not a consistent pattern found at the time, some people reporting or some countries reporting worse cognitive or memory problems compared to US Latinos. And again, in Argentina where things and Chile where things were still not that bad at the time, less problems. So uh, these are overall uh, what we have. So the main conclusions at, at this point is that we observed a differential impact of the pandemic by race, ethnicity, uh, in the US, again, during the early stages of the pandemic, uh, at least, that kind of go um, or underscore this notion that not only are there more cases um, and COVID related deaths within certain communities, but this is impacting uh, the lives of people in many different ways, regardless of whether they were exposed to the virus or not. Um, Interestingly, we saw that despite more negative consequences in the pandemic on, on a number of aspects of life and well being in Latino and non Latino Blacks, they also, both of these groups, represented more or reported more positive changes, suggesting maybe a more positive uh, reframing and, and coping with the changes that are happening at the pandemic. Again, this is data from some time ago now, more than a year ago. Uh, and we do have longitudinal data and we're looking now and looking how things, investigating how things can cha will change or not. It'd be interesting to see whether this pattern kind of uh, continues of, or whether it hits a point where people have been impacted so badly that it's really hard to see the positive um, in the difficult um, life changes. Um, Latinos living in several countries in Latin America that are reported in general also experienced more negative impacts, but as again, also reported more positive reframing. So a similar thing of what we saw here in the US. Um, so our future directions, there's many, you know, there's a several limitations of this study, including that it's not population based, that it only includes a subset of people um, with certain characteristics. But we are going, we're in the process of incorporating data from other countries, as I mentioned, Uruguay, my country of origin, but also Brazil and several other countries in Latin America. And we are continuing to examine how things change longitudinally over time and potentially down the line investigate whether this impacts the onset of 
neurological conditions such as Alzheimer's disease? What is the impact of the pandemic on those conditions? That's one of the long-term goals of uh, this line of work. Uh, so with that, I wanted to thank you and thank uh, uh, Dr. Eiler and my co-presenters uh, and my co-presenter, Dr. Brown, and uh, thank you for your attention um, and for uh, allowing me to share this work with you. Uh, this work was funded by the National Institute of Health, the Alzheimer's Association, and a philanthropic gift from Mr. Irene Tragen. So thank you all very much. <laughs>